Like any other car enthusiast, I've been doing performance and aesthetic modifications that transform my car from being just another Q50 to being a unique expression of my personality and an extension of my being. More recently, I've been exploring premium aftermarket lighting and I'm pleased with my new addition, Premium Underglow by Glow Industries. Yes, I said premium. This isn't your average underglow kit that you get on Amazon and plug into your cigarette lighter on a Friday night. This underglow kit is custom cut, fully integrated with my vehicle, and features the brightest LEDs available on the market right now. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire implementation. Check the links in the description, I'll have links to the kit from Glow LEDs along with coupon codes, plus links to anything else I use in this project. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe, there's going to be plenty more on this channel just like this. Sit tight. Now I get it, Underglow is polarizing. It's definitely making a comeback, but some consider it ricey, it is what it is. This kit is capable of doing the whole RGB color chasing effects, which I'll definitely use at meets or on heists or any other reason that I've got to do that. But realistically, nine days out of 10, this is my daily driver. And I really wanted sort of a classy implementation that I can use day to day and not have to worry about switching it on and off. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I did that, how I've got it integrated with my welcome sequence that as puddle lighting, and the whole nine yards, so just stay tuned. But I'm gonna get started right at the beginning with measurement. Now, part of what makes an underglow kit premium is the fit. Try to think of it like a suit. It's really easy to see when someone's wearing a suit that doesn't fit them right. It's either boxy or it's too tight, and it just looks clumsy, right? But a tailor suit is built to measurements that kind of make it hug the person's body in the right places and really make it complement their overall presence. And with Underglow, it's the same concept. You want your LED strips to really hug your body lines from end to end and ensure you've got good consistent light throughout with no dead zones. I started right at the front, the center of the front bumper because I knew I was gonna to wanna to have two strips going in either direction. So any of those addressable animations or the color chasing animations, I wanted them to come from the front of, or the center of the front of the bumper and then go down either side of my vehicle. So I measured the front bumper, I measured the length of the side skirts, I measured the length of the rear quarter panel, and then I measured the length of the rear bumper and I documented all of those. So if you're looking for specific measurements for an Infiniti Q50, you're gonna want two 34 inch strips for the front bumper coming from the center, two 82 inch strips for each of the side panels, two 22 inch strips for each of the rear quarter panels, and then two 16 inch strips for the rear bumper, you know, between your exhaust pipes. I gotta give a shout out to Seth over at Glow LEDs because he walked me through this entire process and end customer service is off the charts in comparison. And that's another benefit of working with a premium underglow provider. Uh, also, these aren't mass produced parts. <laughs> Once this order went over to Seth, you know, he was actually going through, he was cutting off the lengths of LED strips. He showed me kind of the entire process and, and sent me pictures of my kit. So I knew, you know, I was gonna be getting quality well before it showed up at my front door. Okay, so first thing out of the box, I saw two runs of, two really long runs of cable. Uh, now this is gonna be the cable that's gonna carry the signal from the controller to uh, each of the LED strips. Uh, you're gonna see this whole red, white, and green pattern uh, throughout the video. Now opening up the box. Oh. So right off the bat in the box, we've got some nice branded stickers. Uh, we can use these on the build or realistically, these are going on my toolbox. Here's the controller and I'll go over that in meticulous detail, of course, and let you know what gets plugged in where and where all the signals go. I'll cover that a little later. Just another view of those low temp wire connectors. And here is where the magic happens. So these are the LED strips that we are gonna stick to the bottom of our bumper. Each one came pre-wired and pre-soldered with connectors and you can see which is male and which is female. All the LED strips are backed with 3M backing to stick to your body. Here we've got two power distribution bricks which I will speak through. 
and we've got dozens of these extra connectors and that's what we're going to use to connect our rg or our red white and green wires to our power strips to run power along the length of the vehicle these are also waterproof connectors so you don't need to worry about water getting in and shorting out anything now these LED strips are 12 volt LED strips. So what you'll see on a lot of the cheaper brands is that they use five volt LED strips. Now the benefit of 12 volt strips is that they're a lot brighter, they run more efficiently, which means that they're using less electricity and generating less heat. And then the byproduct of that is they last longer. So they're not gonna burn out on you prematurely. Seth is actually an engineer, so he's got all the luminosity sheets. He's actually working with the manufacturers to kind of move the needle and have the brightest LEDs on the market. And these are officially the brightest LEDs on the market. I also picked up a light meter and I'm carrying it around with me everywhere I go. So if I see anyone that I know is flexing online with filters to make their underglow look brighter, I'm gonna be checking you. All right, let's talk about uh, wiring. So the power for all of this is going to come from the battery area and what i did was ran all my channels down to the center of the front bumper because that's where i want all my animations to originate from from that first strip i connected the two front bumper strips that went down either side of the vehicle i've got strips going down the um, side skirts and then i've got strips on either quarter panel on the rear and then I've got two little strips that connect uh, on the rear bumper. Now all those strips are connected by that red, white, and green wire that we've got. And I'm gonna show you how to solder all that together uh, later on in this video. But essentially what we've got is two channels, one channel going down either side of the vehicle. And then in the app, you can program exactly what those channels do and actually have them work together um, to have cohesive animations all the way throughout. You don't necessarily need to do it this way, but I wired it this way just in case one day I decide to enable those, you know, turn signal animations or anything like that. I'll have the ability and I won't have to rewire anything that's attached to my car. Now, you may consider this a little ghetto, but for measurement, I use masking tape. I just lay down the masking tape where I want the wire to lay down and then I'll peel off the masking tape and measure, you know, end to end where the wire and that's what I'll use to uh, cut and run the actual wire. Once I come under here, realistically I'm going to have uh, the strip ending up right about here. So I'm gonna to wanna to run wire underneath here through the bumper. So I'm gonna start running my tape and you can see exactly how I'm getting down. <laughs> length I'm going to need to cut and I'm probably going to give myself a little bit of extra um, you know just since this isn't scientific and worst case scenario I can tuck the extra wire somewhere but I just okay by now we've got LED strips that we're going to fit on our bumpers and our bumper panels and now we've already cut lengths of red white and green strips that are going to connect those uh, LED strips on their individual channels so all we need to do now is just add the included waterproof connectors to our cables and then we'll be able to complete our channels and start installing this on the vehicle itself. Okay, so here we've got the red, white, and green cable. And excuse the mess over here. Um, here we've got the red, white, and green cables. And just to review, I'll probably say this a couple times in the video, but red is going to be your 12 volts of power white is going to be your ground and green is going to be your data cable now since this is going to be a length of cable that we're running to deliver power and data to some strips uh, we're going to use these connectors here's an example of 
uh, one of these uh, low LED strips and you'll see that on the end of them they've got connectors and there's actually uh, arrows on the strip itself that uh, tell you, uh, here's an example one, that tell you the direction of the flow so we know that this is the input end of the strip and then there's another connector on the output end that looks like this basically. So what that tells me is that from my red, white, and green, uh, from my strip that's coming from the controller, I'm going to want to connect one of these. And there's actually red, white, and green wires in here that we can connect. So after we got the protective cover off of the connector, we can see that the colors aren't red, white, and green. It's not the end of the world. The wires still serve the same purpose. So on our cables, we're going to connect red to red, white to black, and then green to yellow. And that's going to be still power to power, ground to ground, and then data to data. All right, so I nerded out about these things and apologies if you already knew about these, but this is fresh to me. So these are low temperature wire connectors. They've got solder in them. And when you heat them up with a heat gun, it melts the solder and connects the wires. So if you don't go with the glow kit, uh, I'm still gonna link these in the description uh, just in case they're interesting to you, you can pick them up. Now I'm not gonna make you watch me splice connectors to the ends of all of these uh, strips of wires. Just know that you need to add your uh, male and female connectors to the ends of each of your red, white, and green strips just to be able to connect all of your strips together on those channels as we showed. Now these wire connectors also have these red dots on here that makes the connection between the two wires waterproof also. And you'll see here, the connection between the wire strips and the wire that you just soldered is also waterproofed and secured with a screw. So really good shape and really high quality connections on all of these. Okay, I promised I was gonna tell you about these power distribution bricks. I think now's the right time. So these are another perk that you only see in premium underglow kits like glows. What these help you do is keep your wiring organized and instead of running all the power to your controller and generating extra heat that you don't need in your situation, you can have all your powers and all your grounds running to and from this distribution brick. All right, let's talk about the controller. So this is a Bluetooth controller, but it does also come with an RF remote so you can use it without uh, opening the app on your phone. Uh, let's talk about the wiring. So on the left hand side, it's going to be your inputs and on the right hand side is going to be your outputs. On the left hand side, you've got mandatory power at the top and mandatory ground at the bottom. That's going to run power to the controller. Uh, you're going to run that from your power distribution bricks. So the reds will go to power, the blacks will go to ground. Also on the left are inputs for the four triggers that this controller supports. So these triggers can run from anything like your turn signals or your brake signal or your headlight signal or even something like your door jar switch and within the app you can actually configure different actions to happen when certain triggers happen so if your left turn signal turns on and you've got it hooked up to trigger one say then you can say okay make my channel one turn orange when i'm turning left so really cool flexibility that these inputs offer now on the right side or the output side, uh, since we've got these power distribution blocks, we don't need to worry about power and ground running to each of these strips. So instead, all we need to focus on is those data one through four. So for any channel that you set up, you're just gonna wanna run the green signal cable um, from the data ports on this controller. All right, so now we've got all of our measured strips that are gonna go on the body of the vehicle. We've got all of the wiring cut and we've got connectors on all of them. So we should have full channels now that you know would stretch to the front, to the back of the vehicle. All we need to do is connect those channels up to the controller using the wiring that we just covered. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, I won't make you watch the entire thing, but basically all I'm doing is connecting the end of the channels to the power distribution bricks and then running the data to the controller itself. Once that's all done, we are ready to do some bench testing. So for my bench testing, I'm using my good old 
brick from Amazon, I'll link it in the description, I'm plugging it in, and because we've got these power distribution bricks, all I'm going to do is connect the red cable to the power distribution brick and the black cable to the ground distribution brick, and then we should have power to do our bench test. So here we see segment one of channel one working just great. And what I'm going to do is hook up segment one of channel two. And once I see that working, then I know I'm good to go and start moving this over to the vehicle. So the hard part's done. Okay, for placement, I just need to be sure that my controller and distribution bricks were in a waterproof area that was in close proximity to my battery and to my blue ghost because I'm using the blue ghost to be in charge of my welcome and departure sequences. So I ended up placing everything right here on either side of the battery compartment and I just used, uh, I think I used Gorilla double-sided tape to make sure that it stays stuck there even if there's a lot of heat generated by my engine. And then from here, I just ran all the red, white, and green cables from my channels from the controller uh, all the way down to the front bumper right in the center where I want my strips and my animations to start. To make routing the wires a lot easier, I just removed the passenger side air box that's on the side of the, um, the battery. Um, it's just two of those 10 millimeter screws and you just pull up on the air box and it comes right out and it makes it a lot easier to run the wires. You'll see through the entire uh, thread that I used a lot of zip ties here. I wanted to make sure that nothing was touching anything hot, nothing was gonna get caught in any belts or anything, so I feel real good that everything is well secured in here. Now you know, now you may notice I probably mentioned the battery a couple times, but I haven't really said how we're connecting to the battery and how we're delivering power to our underglows. And that's because it really depends on your application. So I actually posted a poll up in an underglow group that I recently joined just to ask people how they were connecting. And there's really a, a, a lot of different ways that this can be done. The most common one was wiring a switch from the battery and then manually switching the underglows on or off. There's also options for keeping it always on, but you risk draining your battery. And then you can tap, you know, add a fuse um, to an accessory or an ignition circuit so that your underglows are on whenever your car is in accessory mode or wherever your car is on. So it really depends on what you want to do. Personally, I've been obsessed with incorporating my underglow into my welcome sequence. So I use the blue ghost to power my underglow. Now you'll be familiar with the blue ghost if you've seen my uh, headlight uh, DIY videos. Uh, I'll link them in cards somewhere around here um, or I'll link them in the description. But basically the blue ghost allows me through the app or in response to triggers from the vehicle to do certain animations or certain uh, sequences on my headlights and ideally on my uh, underglow also. So now if I set this in the blue ghost to be triggered uh, based on any trigger. So now when I open the door, let's set this up here. Okay. Feel me? You see what I'm trying to do here? <laughs> Bro. Now in order to get this to work, I did need to wire in a relay just to make sure that my underglows were getting enough amperage to have nice bright light. I chopped up a little video on how I wired the relay, but I'm only going to post it if somebody lets me know in the comments that they're really interested in this, so let me know. 
Okay, so now that we've got our power run, we've got all of our controllers and wiring situated, it's, it's really the easy part. So now all we need to do is pick up, you know, our strips and start sticking them to the underside of the body. Now the real key here is just making sure that whatever surface that you're sticking them to, you are cleaning very thoroughly. thoroughly. I used acetone on all the surfaces uh, just to make sure that they were completely clean of any debris, of any grease or oil or anything like that to make sure you can get a good firm seal uh, with that 3M adhesive. I was also very particular on mine. I wanted to make sure that no individual pixels, no LEDs were going to be visible uh, when you're looking at my vehicle, even if you're you know, down on your knees for some reason or another, uh, looking at the underside of my car, I don't want anybody to be able to see any LED, so I was really particular with placement on these. And those two things, and then one last thing, which is the obvious jack points. I wouldn't ever want to pinch um, my LED strips whenever I'm jacking the car up, which I tend to do now at least once a week for some reason. Oh yeah, because I got this damn channel. So at the front of the car, I didn't mount to the front bumper, I mounted to the front under tray and then ran it around the side of the vehicle. In each of the wheel wells, I actually didn't end up running it uh, under the body like I measured. It was still ended up being the right measurement of tape, but what I did was run the wire behind the uh, fender liners uh, in each wheel well and that uh, had me feeling like it was secure and not going to get caught on anything. For under the side skirts, I just ran it along the side. Um, underneath you'll see there's like a, it's almost like a cardboard thing. You can pierce through it pretty easily, but that's where I stuck the uh, strips to. Uh, in this position, I could see that they were pointing outwards a little bit, which will give me a nice, nicer, you know, wider spread of light. And then it still won't be visible if you look, you know, under the car. And then for the rear, it was a little challenging because there wasn't really anywhere good to mount um, these LED strips. I could have mounted them right to the bottom of the rear quarter panel, but then you'd be able to see those LEDs, you know, pretty easily. So what I did was get a couple trusty wire hangers. I untwisted them and I mounted them above eye level within the quarter panel. Uh, and they're in there pretty sturdy. I wrapped them around the actual frame so I can tell you they're not going anywhere. And then I just mounted the strips to those wire hangers. I used the 3M adhesive as well as some zip ties just to be 100% sure that they weren't gonna go anywhere. And just have a line that runs, points the LEDs face down, um, but it's still you know, above the level of the bumper so you won't be able to see any individual LEDs. That's pretty much it, y'all. That's the whole install. I have to admit, I'm a grown ass man, but I had tons of fun just playing with this in the garage and configuring the different uh, modes that are available with this controller. One last thing. So after I got this all buttoned up, the first night I went out for a heist. And when I was pulling back into the garage, I recorded a quick video and I could see that the LEDs were still showing underneath the front bumper. So I came up with a quick fix that is working pretty well. You know, not too rocket science, not terribly extravagant. In fact, I'd say it's a little bit ghetto, but it got the job done. I'll put the link down in the description. Basically what this is, is just a, a rubber seal that goes on the bottom of doors, but it's got really heavy duty adhesive tape on it. And what I did was just stuck it to the bumper. There's a little lip on there that it fits on actually really perfectly. Um, so I just stuck it under the bumper and it does an awesome job of just blocking visibility of the LEDs. I made sure to position it so it's not really affecting the output of the LEDs or the light that it casts out in front of the bumper. So this actually worked out as a perfect solution. It actually works so well that I did the exact same thing on my TV. So I've got LEDs behind my TV at home. And when you stand in a certain position, you can see the LED lights behind them. So I just got more of these seals off of uh, Amazon and just put them uh, behind my TV. And it really does a good job of blocking the uh, visibility to those LEDs. 
that's pretty much it man so uh i hope this was helpful to you i can't say enough good things about this glow led kit i love the way that it came out i love how bright the leds are i i like how it sets off the entire vehicle but it doesn't look too aftermarket too tacky too ricery uh so really thrilled with it if you found this video helpful please consider liking and subscribing thanks for checking me out see you on the next one peace